Hey guys, Ron here. It's uh, some crazy time in the middle of the night on uh, on a Wednesday, October second, I think. So this uh, Threadripper is sold and going to Japan to a GC student, graphic designer, and this one is going to a kid for Christmas in Texas. So I really feel good about that because I usually don't like selling these, but I feel good about that. All right, so my buddy brought me this printer, 3D printer. Ender uh, 3, Creality, which I think, in my mind, it would mean Creative Reality would be a good uh, figure for the name. But he brought me this, he was having trouble with it, and it's not the unit itself, it's uh, operator malfunction. So uh, <laughs> these are the prints he came up with first. First couple wouldn't, he couldn't get them to stick to the table, to the bed. And then on this one, the resolution is terrible. It's the line, wrong heat, and uh, then I did this one a little later, a little better. But uh, it wasn't flowing properly. So all these had an issue. It's not the printer's fault. What he did was he replaced the nozzle and he didn't tighten it fully. So. What he did was he jammed up the uh, the hot end and the cool the uh, cooler, everything. He jammed it up with uh, filled it with plastic. When it hardened, there's nowhere. It's not worth trying to get it out of there. Plus, when he was messing with it, he broke the wire for the uh, thermistor uh, temperature probe. So I ordered a new one. The whole thing complete was like 20, 28 bucks. So I got to get that, put that in here. The other thing was um, this this arm was not level. This right side was a good, uh, I would say, six or eight millimeter lower than this side. And and tightening the screws behind the extruder uh, feeder wouldn't do it. What it had to do was on this end. When this is connected to that to the plate with these this this plate, the rollers, there's two screws in there, and you see, if you raise the arm up, keep upward pressure while you're tightening them, and then adjust the rollers. One roller has an eccentric adjustment. On all of these, one roller has an eccentric adjustment. Then uh, bring it up, tighten it, and then put the roller in tight. That made the difference. I got that right. So I think it's a great piece. Uh, so I'm gonna rewire the whole. Uh, set up and another quick thing was um sorry guys got one arm today i'm too lazy to get a tripod it's not in the put uh, one of my computer screens over the fan cover that goes over here so nothing can drop in there it doesn't restrict or it doesn't impede the flow of air or anything like that so basically that's what's happening also i think i'm gonna upgrade this uh, feeder, but I think it had a little slippage there. I tightened that up. Everything else was a pretty good. The tolerances are a little loose, but this is an incredible piece of equipment for the price. Just fantastic. The heat, the bed heats up quick and beautifully. 24 volt power supply. Just terrific piece. So, uh, the deal was, you know, I could have it if I fix it. So, of course, I'll have it fixed tomorrow. And I ordered another one for myself. I'm thinking about getting a 10S. And somewhere in storage of one of my boxes, I have a, uh, a maker piece, uh, I think version 3. I have to go look through my stuff. So that's what's going on, guys. So, shout out to Naomi Wu, open source genius. She's uh, bringing China into the 20th century, 21st century. It's unbelievable. Full open source. And this company, Creality, they're doing the right thing. And because of that, they're going to be bigger than they could ever imagine. Just keep coming out with good new products. I'm really liking the 10S. I think the 10S is a great piece and easy to modify. So, way to go. So, I'm getting a little organized here in my old age. Shop's looking pretty good. I get started on a project, though. It's a mess. One of the reasons I need, you know, I got these robotic toys. One of the reasons I want to get these printers going is I need to make parts for these Ivo dogs. Like the ears, it's famous for losing the ears, especially the O and the left. That's the series one, the first one they ever made. 
the one in the middle is a 7 uh, 7M2 and the one on the right is a, a 210 and it's very hard you can't get parts for these even batteries you get you know if I can make battery cases and grab the circuit boards out of some and just re redo them but you can't get parts so those are one of the ideas I want to make these parts for these for people because in Japan they really love these things and uh, I'm doing some web posting with my servers so they're busy and like that editing system all right guys so uh I have to say goodbye to these two guys and these two children of mine, Threadworker and Ryzen 5. Um, tomorrow I'll get the parts for this and uh, we'll get this fixed up and running and make some prints and show you guys. And I also have another one coming, which uh, I don't know if I'll do a, a video assembling it because I think there's a million of them out there. But I've got some ideas to. Uh, Use it like a 3D plotter, too. You can do some artwork. All right, guys. Check in with you later. All right, out for now. Ciao, baby. Okay, guys, we're on here. So, uh, I got this guy working. Replace the, uh, the nozzle, the hot end, the cooler, the thermistor. Actually, the whole thing is going to play how it plays. Holding I'm checking some of the wiring out. I still have one or two fine threads on the line, but I'm getting good things for the reason. I'm so good that I'm putting together another one. Another repair, another one. Add to the unit. Yeah. Alright, guys, we're going to get this thing going. Good repair line. I got the, uh, the whole computer unit. Original from Amazon for like 21 bucks. And it came with uh, all of the wires to run down the uh, insulated tube. Also, the Chinese insulation is the type of when you put your fingers in and pull it, it shrinks. So you don't have to you know, run something through to pull it through. You can actually squish it and widen it and get it into its genius. Anyway, uh, the things are majorly well made. The more I play it, the more I like it. And also, the two screws on the side. You can level the base with that. There's a, lot, a little bit of play when you loosen them. You can actually level it and make it very uh, rigid. So, uh, also I have a problem with this end with a uh, good, I say six, five to six millimeters lower than this side. So, I would, I uh, loosen the screws. I have to take this out, up and out, take the whole with the axis. And I tightened those two screws back there, but that wasn't the one that actually did it. There's a pair of set of screws over here. So that made a difference. And then... Um, yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to Naomi Wu. Thanks for subscribing. And you're a good way out on. Good for the visiting industry. Um, I'm telling you, uh, CR-10S next. I'll get one of those. And, uh, I got some ideas. We should have some uh, U.S. Uh, representatives for repair. So the average consumer who doesn't not an enthusiast who wants to get into this can have some place to go and work and uh, get repairs, get some advice. Someone they can talk to on the phone. All right, guys. So one arm bandit, put another one together with one arm. No problem. Uh, sold the uh, one in Japan, a giant uh, in-wing D-frame in full size. Red Ripper going to Japan. Tri still is going to a kid named Gabriel in Texas. I'm uh, really pleased. I just don't like selling it, but these are both students. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, on this one I had to slow the print down to 74%. I didn't go and cure or anything. I just went to it. Uh, whatever the speed was that they programmed it and set it up, I just lowered it to 74%. And I uh, put the temperature up. I had three false starts. But once I got the temperature up and the bed warmed up nice, it's been great. Also, it's getting cold here. I have to keep the windows closed while we're turning. You don't want the temperature change. But, uh, yeah, that's the excitement for today, guys. Alright, out for now. Hey, guys, so uh, I fixed this one. Actually, I think for the first time it's got a half piece of print. 
I see one mistake by his foot. But, uh, I fixed this one. I built this one using a free uh, filament that came with it. See how this one goes. This one came with the uh, one of the new glass pieces plus the uh, top piece plus another extra. Surface. But that, that, that's the glass that heats and shrinks and heats and expands. Easy release, easy stick. So that one came with it, this one came with it. A bunch of nozzles came with it. So I've been having a fun with most of these. This side seems lower than this side, or this side. And uh, I'm trying to level it. I can't quite figure out why I'm doing that. Fenders, uh, Reality, excellent, excellent. Everything's machined nicely, countersunk, done right, little details are taken care of. It's really high quality. I remember years ago the Chinese really had trouble with their steel and aluminum, but now they're world class, world class guys. I'm gonna have to do some work on this thing, but it's what you gotta do. That's why you have a workshop, you can do these things. That's another, uh, another eyeball that was sent to me from Japan, the red one. And he came with a skateboard. I'm, I'm going to make a video on that. I've never seen that. This is a Model 210, I think. Ibo. What's happening? The Model 210, Model 7, Model 210, Model 110. He has a boogie board, a skateboard that's really cool, like brand new in the box. So I'm probably going to sell, I'm definitely going to sell Series 1. Uh, although I'm thinking of uh, making parts for these guys. You can't, if you lose the ears, you can't get the ears, so we'll print them. We'll make them. Alright guys, it's kind of a mess over here today. Editing station and the usual stuff. All right, guys, out for now. My theory was on the Ender 3 was to fine tune it and dial it in and see if I get perfect prints or close to it without any modifications. Just using original Ender parts and uh, reality parts, no aftermarket stuff. Just looking at it, the design and the quality looks like it should be absolutely excellent. But I haven't added any of these mods to it. The only thing I do is put a screen over the fan on the, uh, the main board. But uh, here's the first print. And things are in trouble. It's, it's all, I have no resolution, parts broken off, strings hanging off, out of alignment, sections missing kind of. So that was the first one. Then the next one, as far as we got. And I noticed the feed, it was feeding funny. Um, the nozzle wasn't tightened all the way, it was a lot of plastic in the uh, in the hot end. I stripped that down, took it completely apart, and uh, it was just too too much plastic in there. I was gonna bake it, and it wasn't worth it. Twenty-five dollars. I replaced it with one from Creality Original. Cooler nozzle, hot end. Comes with the four cables, two for the uh, probes for the thermistor, two for the heating element. You put them in the uh, original wire harness. Um, and I found that uh, it wasn't full, it wasn't getting the full feed. So then I tightened up the bed. I tightened up the rollers on the bed. And this bar in particular, I had a level with it. it this side was way low. And it was print. It was uh, about six hours in on a dragon print. Uh, what else did I do this time? Just tuned it up using the original parts. I made sure the bed was seated properly and I could deal with it nicely. 
And now, you know, getting the first level was easy. Actually, you can eyeball it. You let it start to lay it down. And you can see, it's too close to, to, the, to the bed. You can lower the bed while it's moving. You have time for the first two, two layers or so to adjust, make your adjustments. So then, after doing the nozzle, oh, voting to, by the way, uh, according to reality, the inside of that cooler and the uh, hot end is already Teflon lined. So I haven't had to put the Teflon spray paint and all that stuff, not necessary. But still, to the, from the cooler to the nozzle, it's Teflon lined. And I took apart the other one and checked it out, which is true. So my theory was, again, what they made from the factory should do what it's supposed to do. And then adding all the other mods is a good idea, but it shouldn't be necessary. I think I just had the screen, I don't feel like printing a uh, cover. So, after the first repair, getting the nozzle done, we're quite fine tuned that this was the first print. I really had a hard time getting it off the, the uh, pad. The uh, pad was really stuck on there, man. The resolution's good. There's a missing thread here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little gap here in the foot. But otherwise, the details there, the resolution's good. Finish is nice. Then, after a little more fine tuning, after a little fine tuning, I got the calibration key to do that one. To me, this came out well because. The edges are nice, the edging's done nice, the cross hatch is done nice, the resolution's good. The details are good in there. And that, and uh, so this dog was five hours. A little over five hours. I knocked it down to uh, 78%. Slowed it down a little bit. And now uh, this guy is. He's five hours and 25 minutes in. Just the platform stuff that's going to get dragged on top of it. Uh, and she's tight. She's going to be coming along now. So, uh, you know, just patience and detail. Patience and detail. But everything's all over though. Just, just sitting, getting the belt tension just right. Getting all the wheels not over tight, but smooth. Getting the bed tight and smooth really makes a difference. And also, if the center is low, by using the glass, you, you try to uh, zero it, um, calibrate it. Sometimes the center is lower than the rest. So a couple of pieces of paper tape underneath in the center, and the clips on the glass, the glass is slightly flexible. That'll make up for it. But, you know, depending where you're printing, you can just zero that area. You don't have to zero everything. Anyway, so that's the idea, and also, this guy, straight out of the box, in a hurry, didn't, didn't do any, any fine tuning or anything special. I don't use the uh, white filament that they give me, as far as I got. That's as far as I got before it ran out, and it was fine. It's really good. Alright guys, that's the phone. I'll be back. So this is uh, 5 hours and 34 minutes, it's a third of the way done. So it's probably going to be a 12 hour, 13 hour thing. But so far, I'm, uh, I'm good with it. So again, no custom parts, no aftermarket, you know, drafts, coolers, or anything else. All original, golden tubes, cooler, hot end, nozzle. And that's the original, um, bed cover. It's not glass. It was like a tile with a, it's got the, uh, 
got that black surface like that on it. I didn't like it. I flipped it over. I stuffed it up a little bit. It works fine. This one, this was amazing. I, uh, getting the print off of there was crazy. It was really tight. It was good. And this is the new blast they sent that um, contracts and expands. As it cools, it releases. As the heat stays hot, it, it stays tight. It kind of expands and it breaks free. So I'm looking, I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to get a bigger clip. Alright, so when this one gets done, I'll let you guys see it. So this is the progression of everything that happened. And uh, this calibration cube, I'm, I'm pleased with. Even the fine lettering there. The edging on top. The detail work. Alright guys, I'll see you in a little bit. Talk to you later. Alright? Ciao for now. Hey guys, 6 hours and 14 minutes in. We'll check back. Hey guys, Ron here. So my production line is coming along. Uh, I did the dragon and the block on the one I repaired. I did the cubes on both. And uh, they're very tight. Very good. I got this Monoprice uh, Maker Select. A friend of mine bought, couldn't get it to work. Got it to work. It was weird. It makes weird noises. There's nothing binding. It's just the way you can choose the humans. Resonates, the resonates for me. But uh, put it together, he had it in pieces again back in the box. I was not impressed with it at first, but actually it prints very well, it's very accurate. And the dual the axis controllers. And the DZ is zero and the caliper is it just went to work. It seems okay. Time will tell. But uh, yeah, I wasn't that impressed. Nope. I didn't like the way it's wired, hardwired. And in the box, you take all three pieces of connecting and you've got to juggle with it. Um, some of the micro switches seem really small, but it seems like a, more like a, the difference between a big watch and a big clock and a fine piece of jewelry. It has some finesse to it, but it seems to print instantly really well. And it feeds well, it's really easy to use, kind of automatically. You start the filament. And you go over here and it just uh, it feeds in electronically. It's kind of a nice touch. Hear that noise? I don't know if you know if we're tracking, it makes a weird sound, so it's not combining, but it's a resonation of something. Alright guys, so all this good stuff's happening. I'm building, I'm doing parts. I got like a parts order for Sony. I in Japan. I'm gonna build parts for them. So I got a 10S coming tomorrow. I got to put together. I'm going to go into production. I'm gonna make ears, tail, covers for battery packs, and battery battery cases. All right, guys. Always think of something to do. Now for now, I'll see you on the tech line. Hey guys. So this guy finished printing. Let's take a look at it. Like I said, I wasn't that impressed with, it, but it prints really well so far. Tyro seat for your car. And get it off there and see how it is. So the idea is I gotta make on these uh, these are 20 year old robotic dogs, 16 to 18, 20 years old. You gotta make ears, tails, pads for his feet, which are also switches. He responds to those. 
his cover, so to speak. The outside. So I got to get into my favorite CAD program and start designing these things. Uh, there's a huge market for these things. You can't buy parts for these anymore. And the batteries are in a plastic split case that have a certain memory bo uh, circuit board with EEPROM and two batteries, which I think are caps. So I got to look at making some of those too. So put me to work. And also to make these pieces of covers. Like that red piece of the cover, two piece cover. I can make those for guys too. Alright guys, let's get this couch out here and take a look.